What's up guys, Mike Dakota here. Today we're going to go over this problem called max array sum. So given an array of integers, find the subset of non-adjacent elements with the maximum sum. So basically we just need to find the set of, uh, find the subset where the elements are not really adjacent, right? They're not adjacent. So I have to pick, if I have this, this array of negative two, one, three, negative four, five, right? If I pick one as a subset, Right, I cannot pick three because that's right next to it. And I cannot pick negative one because that's next to it also. Right, they want non-adjacent elements and they want us to find the subset that has the maximum sum. So and then we have to calculate the total sum of that subset and return that. So it is possible the maximum sum is zero in the case when all the elements are negative. So in this case, you could see a different types of scenarios. If I pick negative two, three and five, then the total sum would be six. If I pick negative two and three, the total sum would be one. If I pick negative two and negative four, the total sum would be negative six. If I pick negative two and five, the total sum would be three. If I pick one and negative four, the total sum would be negative three. If I pick one and five, the total sum would be six. And if I pick three and five, the total sum would be eight. So the maximum subset sum is eight. So yeah, um, and also note that every individual element is a subset as well. So yeah, we cannot pick adjacent elements. So I cannot pick like negative two and one, and I cannot pick one and three, right? So I cannot pick like elements that are right next to each other. So that's the thing. Okay, so how do you do this problem? Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, use dynamic programming, because this is part of dynamic programming. So first we're gonna build an array of dynamic programming. And what we're gonna do is um, the first element we're gonna set to the first element of the array. Right, because that's like the first element and the second one element uh, dp of one is we're going to set as the max value of the the first element and the second element right the zeroth element and the first one and the reason why we're doing this is because the, that's like the maximum um maximum element that we could start from also right like if i start from so we'll in this case if i start from negative two right i could start from negative two or i could start from one Right, I can start from negative two or negative one or one to pick whichever subset I want to start from. And negative two, I could start from this one also. But I want the, I don't want to just pick like negative two and then uh, not the maximum number between both of these because if I just pick negative two and um, pick negative two uh, or just pick one, that, that's not going to be correct because we want the, the second value, we want the maximum value of the first and second value. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a table. So the first first way we could do this is um, this is how you do it. We're going to start from two and we're going to go to the end. And there's uh, three choices we could have. There's three choices. One is if I don't pick the current element. So if I don't pick the current element, right, it'll just be the same as the last value, right? I'll just be like, okay, well, if I don't pick this, so let's say I have negative one and uh, negative one, right? And then I have one. Let's say I don't want to pick one. Well, if I don't want to pick one and I, and I don't want to pick this element, well, it's, it'll just equal to the previous out, the previous sum, right? Because if I start from negative two and I want to sum up the values for my subset, um, it'll just equal to the previous value of negative two. So that's why we have DP of I minus one. Okay. Now the second choice is what we're going to do is if we increase our value. So we're going to add the current element to our current uh, sum. So in this case, let's say I had negative two and then three, right? So I have negative two, and then let's say I wanna add the value three to my set of negative two. So in this case, I'll just add the value three here. So then the total sum of our maximum sum would be negative two plus three, correct? It would be negative two plus three because we're gonna include, um, include the current element in it. So this minus two represents like, I minus two is gonna represent uh, the previous value of, uh, including the current element, right? I minus two, so I minus one is excluding. We're not gonna include the current element. So we're just gonna use the previous value. Um, since we're setting that previous value that as I minus one, uh, I minus two is gonna represent including the current value, the current value. So I'm gonna include the value of R of I of uh, the current element. So that's why I do DP of I minus two plus R of I. And the third state you could have is um, if I want to start a completely new sum. So if I want to start a completely new sum, so let's say let's say I have like negative two, three, and five, and it's 
Uh, no, that, that's bad value. Um, here, let's say I had one in five, right? One in five, include one in five. But um, also, I I realized that three and five is actually higher, right? Three and five is higher. So in this case, what we're going to do is that we're going to start a new sum with our new value of our current element. So if I had like, um, I don't know, let's say I have one and negative four as a, as a sum of negative three, and I want to start from one to five, right? In this case, um, if I start a new sum, then I'm going to have to go from like one, uh, one, three is higher than one, right? So then I, what I need to do is I need to build off of my previous value as my include my new element that I'm starting from. So that's R of I, right? That's the current element I'm on. So I represents the current L, uh, current index that we're going through the array and R of I represents the current element that we're on. So if I want to start a new sum, then I need to just start it from itself, right? I'm not going to add any previous value and I'm not going to just do that. So uh, because we want the maximum sum, then we have to take the max of all three of these states. And then that will build up our DP array. And then our DP array will just, the last element would just be the one that we actually want of R dot size minus one. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.